The handful of corporations listed here control the spin on almost all the news and information available to Canadians. Alternative voices are silenced or dismissed. The press versus the people. That runs right to the heart of the debate over the future of our country and to the heart of politics. Even the publicly owned CBC favors right-wing voices. Peter Mansbridge's At Issue panel on The National includes regulars Gordon Gibson of the Fraser Institute, Andrew Coyne of the National Post, and former conservative pollster Alan Gregg. Only Chantelle Hébert, national affairs writer for the Toronto Star, and a columnist for Le Devoir represents a more liberal point of view. Most ministers in the Stephen Harper government are not allowed to talk freely to the media, so there has been less public comment from the cabinet than at any other time in our history. Reporters must be on a pre-approved list before they are even allowed to ask questions. A 2006 Senate report on the media notes that no real democracy can function without a healthy, diverse, and independent news media to inform people about the way their society works. The argument is that in a democracy, government should foster healthy and independent news media. For example, two stories of interest to the public all but ignored by the media, were the World Peace Forum in 2006 in Vancouver with some 5,000 people from 78 countries. Media coverage was appallingly bad or even non-existent. Media coverage of the top-level security and prosperity partnership meetings to further integrate Canada beyond NAFTA into the U.S attended by our Prime Ministers, Deputy Prime Ministers, Finance Ministers, members of the military, and many others from Canada, the United States, and Mexico, were essentially ignored by the media. Please. 